Hello, welcome to the Thursday, August 17th, 2017 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. PayPal phishing, nothing really new happens for a long time now, but Xavier came across an actual phishing kit, the software being used to set up and run phishing sites for PayPal. In addition to the code that's really needed to run a phishing site like uh, HTML images to impersonate the respective websites, uh, there was also a list of user agents and IP address ranges that will be blocked from this site, probably in order to prevent uh, researchers and others uh, from actually finding the phishing site easily. Now, quite often, phishing sites will accept whatever credentials you give them, but in this case, they actually appear to try to validate the information they received by connecting to PayPal. Also interesting, a list of banks that they're looking for credentials for and the actual data being written in to the file on the phishing server. Overall, this particular phishing kit included 300 distinct files and the zip file had a total size of 1.8 megabyte. And Kaspersky came across an interesting backdoor that it called Shadow Pad. Now, this backdoor was implemented in XManager 5, which is produced by the Korean company NetSarang. XManager is typically used to gain secure remote access to servers via SSH or SFTP. Now, in this particular case, it looks like someone was able to implement a malicious backdoor in this XManager software somewhere in July. And this particular backdoor is triggered via specific DNS requests. The DNS requests keep changing once a month. So for each month, you have a particular DNS host name that has to be looked up uh, once that text record is looked up and XManager sees that lookup, then it will enable the back door, which gives attackers control over the system. Pretty sophisticated software here. The back door, for example, took various steps to make remote analysis and finding the back door more difficult by, for example, encrypting the code. Now, this is something that was not found by analyzing the code, but by actually seeing the backdoor being used in the wild. So if you have any software from NetSarang, I hope you already updated it. It looks like their code base was compromised in order to include that backdoor. So I would be a little bit careful to check what else they may have modified in the code. Kaspersky did publish a list of domain names that were used in order to trigger the backdoor. Since uh, these domain names change every month, uh, they cover July through December of 2017. So essentially after December 2017, the attacker would no longer have access to the backdoor. Also kind of confirms that everything started in July. Actually kind of amazing how quickly this particular backdoor was found. Now, when you're implementing a CAPTCHA, the problem, of course, is that people with visual problems are not able to see the images. So you typically have to offer an audio file for those people as an alternative. Well, it turns out that historically, these audio files have often been the Achilles heel of uh, these CAPTCHA systems. And the latest example of this is a researcher who actually turned Google's own voice recognition against Google's CAPTCHA audio files. Now, when you just play back a CAPTCHA file, that actually didn't work too well. The problem is that these CAPTCHAs spell out random letters similar to what you would see in many of the CAPTCHA images. And Google's voice recognition, of course, tries to find words within these random letters. 
So what I did is they actually split the CAPTCHA audio file up into individual letters and then played back the letters. While they still had some issues uh, with uh, Google trying to recognize them as birds, it turned out that the bird that was actually recognized well, was related to the actual letter being spoken so it was possible to then map words back to individual letters. Google has been notified of this problem and has since hardened its audio captures. What they did now is that they speak phrases instead of actually just speaking letters and they also made it harder to recognize breaks between words by filling them with noise. But overall, the approach of actually turning Google's own voice recognition against the CAPTCHAs comes down to what we had with the old image CAPTCHAs. If you remember in the good old days, it was just some uh, weird looking text. Well, uh, over the years, it turned out that OCR is actually better than humans in recognizing that text. So as speech recognition improves, the same thing may happen to these audio files. And you probably have seen that you no longer see a lot of these garbled text images instead of more puzzles with different images that you have to recognize. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.